Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can everybody hear me? Some of you know me from uh, Veterans Day, where I do some readings. Uh, my name is Neil Scott Barber, and it's pretty fascinating that you're allowing a red coat to do some readings before July the 4th. But I've lived here since 1987, and I haven't lived in the UK for 30 years, so I've also been married to two Americans, so I think you might accept me as uh, almost an American. <laughs> I'm very patriotic as well. Um, again, some of you have uh, listened to me before. I do some readings, I do some poetry, I do some little funny things as well. But this is a serious uh, business to start with. So I wanted just to uh, begin by uh, uh, talking about three words that are very important to uh, all Americans at every time of the year, but particularly at this time of the year. And of course, the first word is independence. And I kind of looked it up. Uh, for a, a, a clear definition. Independence is freedom from outside control or support, the state of being independent. And of course, in previous years, many years ago, you were fighting for independence from colonial rule, and uh, the country declared its independence. It said that it would no longer accept the rule of another country, i.e. Great Britain and the war of independence was fought to gain independence. The second word is freedom, the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint, absence of subjection to foreign domination or despotic government. And the third and final important word is liberty, the state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life. An instance of this, a right or privilege, especially a statutory one. A few little quotes here to begin with. Freedom is never given, it is won. And that was written by unknown. Abraham Lincoln said, democracy is the government of the people, by the people, for the people. And then John Fitzgerald Kennedy, early in his presidency, said, Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe, to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Finally, Benjamin Franklin said this, those who desire to give up freedom in order to gain security will not have, nor do they deserve, either one. Uh, the first poem I'd like to read is called A Nation's Strength by Ralph Waldo Emerson. What makes a nation's pillars high and its foundation strong. What makes it mighty to defy the foes that round it throng? It is not gold, its kingdoms grand, go down in battle shock. Its shafts are laid on sinking sand, not on abiding rock. Is it the sword? Ask the red dust of empires passed away. The blood has turned their stones to rust, their glory to decay. And is it pride? Ah, that bright crown has seemed to nation sweet, but God has struck its luster down in ashes at his feet. Not gold, but only men can make a people great and strong, men who for truth and honor's sake stand fast and suffer long. Brave men who work while others sleep, who dare while others fly, they build a nation's pillars deep and lift them to the sky. The next one is by Henry van Dyke, who was a Dutchman who was living most of the time in the US, uh, and it's called America for Me, so his home was America. Tis fine to see the old world and travel up and down among the famous palaces and cities of renown. 
to admire the crumbly castles and the statues and kings. But now I think I've had enough of antiquated things. So it's home again and home again, America for me. My heart is turning home again, and there I long to be. In the land of youth and freedom, beyond the ocean bars, where the air is full of sunlight and the flag is full of stars. Oh, London is a man's town, there's power in the air. And Paris is a woman's town, with flowers in her hair. And it's sweet to dream in Venice, and it's great to study Rome. But when it comes to living, there is no place like home. I like the German fir woods in green battalions drilled. I like the gardens of Versailles with flashing fountains filled. But oh, to take your hand, my dear, and ramble for a day in the friendly western woodland where nature has her sway. I know that Europe's wonderful, yet something seems to lack. The past is too much with her and the people looking back. But the glory of the present is to make the future free. We love our land for what she is and what she is to be. Oh, it's home again and home again, America for me. I want a ship that's westward bound to plow the rolling sea to the blessed land of room enough beyond the ocean bars where the air is full of sunlight and the flag is full of stars. Here's a couple of uh, kind of funny things, at least I think they're funny, I hope you do too. Um, this one's called, How Many States Can You Name? Father William, the old priest, made it a practice to visit the parish school one day a week. He walked into the fourth grade class where the children were studying the states and asked them how many states they could name. They came up with about 40 names. Father William jokingly told them, that in his day, students knew the names of all the states. One lad raised his hand and said, Yes, sir, but in those days there were only 13 states. <laughs> the 4th of July weekend was approaching, and Miss Pelham, the nursery school teacher, took the opportunity to tell her class about patriotism. We live in a great country, she announced, one of the things we should be happy is that in this country we are all free. Trevor, who was a little boy in her class, came walking up to her from the back of the room. He stood with his hands on his hips and said loudly, I'm not free, I'm four. <laughs> Couple of silly little jokes here. The difference between a duck and George Washington is... One has a bill on his face, the other has his face on a bill. <laughs> what kind of tea did the American colonists thirst for? Liberty. I know, some of these are, yeah. <laughs> What was the craziest battle of the Revolutionary War? The Battle of Bonkers Hill. Why were the first Pennsylvania settlers like ants? Because they lived in colonies. Why did Paul Revere ride his horse from Boston to Lexington? Because the horse was too heavy to carry. <laughs> Here's a little story, it's called Parable for the Fourth of July. Once in the 1820s, a little boy called Sam was playing in the yard behind his house. During his pretend fighting game, he knocked over the outhouse. Now Sam was upset and worried that he would get into trouble, so he ran into the woods and didn't come out until after dark. When he arrived back home, his puppy was waiting for him. He asked suspiciously, Son, did you knock over the outhouse this afternoon? No, puppy, Sam lied. Well, let me tell you a story, said the father. Once, not that long ago, Mr. Lincoln received a shiny new axe from his father. Excited? He tried it out on a tree, swiftly cutting it down. But as he looked at the tree with dismay, he realized it was his mother's favorite cherry tree. His puppy paused. Just like you, he ran into the woods. When he returned, his puppy asked, Abraham, did you cut down the cherry tree? 
Abraham answered, With father, I cannot tell a lie. I did indeed chop down the tree. Then his father said, Well, since you were honest with me, you are spared from punishment. I hope you've learned your lesson, though. So Sam's father asked again, Did you knock down the outhouse? Pappy, I cannot tell a lie any more, said the little boy. I did indeed knock down the outhouse. Then his puppy father spanked Sam red, white and blue. The boy whimpered, Puppy, I told you the truth. Why did you spank me? Puppy answered, That's because Abraham Lincoln's father wasn't in the tree when he chopped it down. What do patriots put on their dried-out skin? Revo lotion. Which dance was very well liked in 1776? Independent dance. What went down because of the Stamp Act? Americans licked the Britannians. What might you receive if you bred a patriot along with a little curly dog? A Yankee poodle. Have you heard the one concerning the Liberty Bell? Sure, it cracked me up. Just where did George Washington purchase his hatchet? In the chopping mall. And, and lastly, what colonists told the best jokes? Pun Sylvanians. Okay, here's, a, here's another nice poem that I've uh, selected. Just a couple more po poems for you. This one is called The New Colossus by Emma Lazarus, written in 1883. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name Mother of Exile. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome, her mild eyes command, the air-bridged harbour that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden oil. This one is called This one is called The Concord Hymn by Ralph Waldo Emerson. This was sung I, I, I'm not going to sing it, but it was sung at the completion of the Battle Monument July the 4th, 1837 in honour of those who died in the Revolutionary War particularly in the area of Lexington. The Concord Hymn by Ralph Waldo Emerson. By the rude bridge that arched the flood, their flag to April's breeze unfurled. Here once the embattled farmer stood, and fired the shot heard round the world. The foe long since in silence slept, alike the conqueror silent sleeps, and time the ruined bridge has swept down the dark stream which seaward creeps. On this green bank, by this soft stream, we set today a votive stone that memory may their deed redeem when, like our sires, our sons are gone. Spirit that made those heroes dare to die and leave their children free, bid time and nature gently spare the shaft we raise to them and thee. And then lastly, America, my hometown, a poem by Joseph P. Martino. America, my hometown, when I travel about this great nation, I never cease to frown, for wherever I seem to land and settle, I call America my hometown. When I cross the Golden Gate in Frisco Bay, the western states, the Rockies, and Great Plains, my heart wells up with pride from emotions felt deep inside. And my tears become so hard to hide. America, my hometown. From the golden shores and shining cities of the West, 
and along the sandy shores, towns, and villages of the Garden State, things still look simply great. All through colonial New England, and up to rugged coastline of the great state of Maine, our people's quest and dreams of liberty and freedom still remain the same. For justice, freedom, and liberty for all still ring true, just as the Liberty Bell in our founders yesterday, America, my hometown. Along the mighty Mississippi, from Minneapolis to New Orleans, our country's morality and patriotic spirit is alive and well, just as all our other great and noble dreams. America, my hometown. Our founder's vision of liberty and freedom in our country still lives on today throughout our nation in cities both large and small and along Main Street, USA. As Lady Liberty stands every vigilant to top a pedestal on the bay as our founding fathers dream of liberty and freedom still live on to this very day. America, my hometown, God bless. Thank you. 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 Thank you.